Shad Everest. Greetings, I'm Shad. I'm here at Kefili Castle and they have something that is kind of cool. Three examples of classic siege weaponry. We have here a mangonel, then they also have a trebuchet, and further behind that, they have a perrier. I'm going to be talking about each of those specifically because there are misconceptions about each one of these siege weapons. The mangonel, also known as a catapult, I have a dedicated video on this going in a bit more of a deep dive, but I'm going to be able to share some information in context with the other ones. I am very dubious as to how common these were in the medieval period. When the word catapult appears in medieval text, it's actually often referring to a trebuchet. The word catapult wasn't so specific to mean this type of siege weapon. It was actually a more umbrella term for siege weapons that threw big rocks. This more specifically, is a mangonel type of catapult, where that one right there is a trebuchet type catapult. So when you hear catapult, people often always think of mangonel, when actually no, it's more of an umbrella term. So when it comes to mangonels specifically, I have not seen them represented in medieval art. When you're looking at medieval art depicting sieges, they're not very common. I, I cannot think of a single instance of this appearing in medieval art. If you know of any references, I'd love to see them. Please share them in the comments below. And so at the very least, they are far more rare than the depictions of actual, you know, uh, siege weapons such as trebuchets, to the point where they might not have even been around at the medieval period at all. That's going to an extreme. At the very least, I think they're far more rare. And the reason why they're rare is also on a practical sense when you really break down the utility of these things. I don't think they're that useful in all honesty. They work on um, rope torsion. So if we come in closely, we can actually see the torsion ropes right here that they get twisted around and that puts the torsion on the lever arm. The uh, difficulty or uh, problem with something like this is that it's actually uh, like the weight of the arm itself is going to restrict the power in throwing the, uh, the projectile. And that's not necessarily the case with a trebuchet where the weight of the arm is balanced out by the counterweight. So already you're dealing with a system that has less power. Then alone, the fact that the ropes can get loose and they're actually not super powerful as well and there's limitations there, you can really tighten them, don't get me wrong, they can get to a level of power, but the type of projectile that they're able to throw, they have a, a wood block here, but you know, if they throw a block of stone, even if it was that size, it's never going to actually do damage to a proper built castle, like castles that have walls up to four meters thick. This thing is barely going to be able to scratch it. And so at most, the benefit that you could get out of a mangonel like this in a siege situation is to probably get a pot shot on some poor guy right above the battlements when he peeks in between um, the, the, uh, the crenellations. And so you'd have to be really pinpoint accurate to hit that. And I'm not even sure the range would be that great to, to reach it because if you bring it in close enough to really be able to use this against people, you're probably within range of arrow fire because the range on these things, it depends on the size of the projectile. If you go smaller, the range is longer. If you go larger, worse. And if you want large enough to even have the potential of threatening castle, which really wouldn't be able to threaten the castle in all honesty, uh, you'd barely be able to scratch it, but threaten people on the castle, you're probably going to be in range of arrow fire and you're dead. And so you would need a lot of, um, uh, I guess, cover, ba wooden barricades that can sometimes make that you'd drag with you. So then, if these things were used in the medieval period, what would they have been used for? Not really good for sieges. Um, they, I could see them being pretty deadly to infantry, but the problem with trying to use these on a battlefield is they're really hard to maneuver and, and transport. And as soon as the enemy's formation even moves a little bit to the left, all right guys, get going and moving. Now, you, people might say it was on wheels and it'll be harder to move around. Like, cause I've seen recreations and even though I haven't seen a medieval art, they're like, these are more of a Roman type of siege weapon, by the way. They, they, I do believe they are far more common with Roman usage. They're rarely on wheels, but okay, if you put them on wheels, maybe, maybe it would be easy to maneuver, but still a lot more complicated. And that final weird like answer or question that I have as to would these really have been used? If you're gonna go to the trouble of making something like this, for a little bit more effort, you can make something like this. 
a trebuchet. Now these things are far more serious business. And I think this is the biggest reason why mangonels are far less common or represented in medieval art because trebuchets were just so much better. What I like about this trebuchet here is that it's actually vastly more representative of what the more common type of trebuchet would have been in the medieval period. Whenever people talk about trebuchets, they think of war wolf, which was built by Edward Longshanks, right? Who's actually quite somewhat responsible to the either, either commissioning or building a lot of these Welsh castles, uh, like Carnarvon. That, that was one that Edward was particularly uh, behind. And so... When people say a trebuchet can throw a projectile at X distance, stuff like that, they're usually referring to one of the biggest and most impressive trebuchets of medieval history, War Wolf, right? Which was so imposing that it caused <laughs> this castle it was used to besiege to surrender. And because he was a bit let down that he didn't get to use War Wolf and they already surrendered, he decided to use it anyway and throw a couple of rocks at the castle even after they surrendered. But War Wolf is more of an exception compared to the standard size of medieval trebuchets, which this is far more representative of. Now, when you get to a trebuchets of more common sizes, we can come in and take a look at the size of projectile that they're able to throw. And so we have some kind of wooden um, projectiles here. You, you, you substitute that with something to size. Substitute that with a stone, okay, of this size. That's what I could throw. Would that be able to demolish a castle? Not really. You would have to dedicate hundreds of uh, rocks like that at the exact same spot with the hope of taking down one of the, uh, the towers. Warwolf was more capable of demolishing a castle, but your standard sized trebuchet, nowhere near as uh, effective in demolishing a castles. It's still dangerous, and what you could have a vastly higher chance of doing, which is what you would really be trying to focus and use this trebuchet for, is knocking down the battlements, okay? Those crenellated battlements, specifically the Merlon, instead of being up to four meters thick, they're often about a foot thick. And suddenly you have a much higher chance of knocking down a couple of those. And if you knock down a couple of those, you are taking away the cover that defenders on the castle would be able to use. And if you're lucky, you might even be able to knock down one of them when the defender is right behind it, or even between the crenellations, and you could kill a few of the defenders as well. And so other uses, of course, is throwing nasty things over the castle walls with trebuchets. So they, they definitely have far more uh, uses, actual functional valid uses in a siege type situation than the smaller, less powerful mangonels. And so absolutely, trebuchets are serious business, but don't think that every trebuchet is able to take down a castle. Most standard sized trebuchets are going to be for harassment, intimidation, because they'd make a ruckus. You would certainly hear these boulders smacking against the castle wall. So imagine trying to sleep in a long form siege where you're constantly getting bombarded on the walls. And then there is the level of damage you would be able to achieve. But the damage, once again, is not going to demolish the castle unless it's dedicated, consistent, and you're hitting in the same spot. And of course, once again, I'm referring to the standard size trebuchet. They were not as big as Warwolf, but, but there are smaller types of trebuchets that are a bit more compact, a bit easier to move around and use. And that's, they have another example of that right here. And that is, well, they call it here uh, a perrier. Another word for this type of um, uh, siege equipment is a traction trebuchet. So instead of having a big counterweight like we saw on, you know, more standardized trebuchets, what we have here See this arm that there's ropes hanging off the arm? When that gets pulled down, you can have men hold onto the ropes and then yank it down on this end. And it effectively functions the same as a trebuchet, but instead of having a dedicated counterweight, you have people pulling on ropes. And they're usually a bit smaller. But by the way, this is one of the more earlier types of um, uh, trebuchet that was adopted by medieval uh, um, in medieval warfare, should I say. This, this was the more early type before they built ones with dedicated counterweights like the dedicated bigger trebuchet that we have over here. So you could do somewhat of similar things with this in terms of throwing nasty things over castle walls, harassing, 
um, but you're definitely not going to be able to take down a castle with uh, trebuchets, because it's a type of trebuchet, traction trebuchet, like this. Again, you could probably throw things at the crenellated battlements, and you might even be able to take down a merlon or two with them, but you're going to be limited in terms of power. So these are the more common types of uh, siege equipment, though there is one other that they have here, interestingly enough. And it's this siege equipment that we see in this bit of cover right here. They have a ballista. Again, I don't see ballistas depicted in medieval art very commonly, which makes me dubious as to how commonly they were used in medieval warfare. Ballistas are more classically uh, a Roman type of siege equipment. And uh, you're not going to, again, like, like the usefulness of this against a castle is almost nothing. You're not going to be able to damage a castle with a ballista. You'd be aiming for the defenders on the castle wall. But the thing is, though, if, if a, a ballista, right, is so useless against the stone of a castle where the only hope you really have of using it effectively is to target the individuals defending the castle, why on earth would you use a ballista when you can achieve the same with a bow? A bow is easy to transport, quicker to reload and shoot. You could probably get it even more accurate with, with practice. Okay, because uh, the ballista, don't get me wrong, it would be able to kill people, but it gives me a sense that it's overkill against an individual and yet totally underpowered against the castle itself. What would you really use it for? Like, arrows have sometimes trouble penetrating armor and something more powerful like a ballista could probably give a, a more surefire kill shot if you manage to ping someone right on top of the castle. So maybe that's the validity or justification for using ballistas in siege warfare. As to range, I'm a little dubious. It depends on the size of the projectile again. But for me, okay, ballistas, they're not like incredible in siege warfare, but I will grant them that they're more effective. I, I would say by the fact that you have higher chances of getting through armored defenders and maybe a bit more accurate as well. They're probably better than your manganel. Still, I think the uh, best option if you're wanting to actually target people on the castle itself just use bows and crossbows, the classics where it's not as difficult, not as hard to transport. Yeah, you probably have more ammunition for it. And you probably need multiple people operating that to get it working. So there we go. Four classic types of siege engines uh, that they have here at Kerfilly. Some more valid than others. I do appreciate you watching and I uh, hope to see you in the next video here on Shadowversity. So until that time, 